Good evening. This is Maestro Cortello with a Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. Today we have a 1v1 on Bay of Graz. Our first player is Destofel, playing as the Tyranid Lictor Alpha and infiltrating melee hero. Very powerful with flesh hook and just in general being a really, really good hero. His opponent is Sir Topi, playing as the Orc Warboss. Tanky melee hero, can stomp, can charge can use some pretty incredible buffs like Ard Boys and Use Your Choppers. So people have been starting to answer my call for uh, replays, my indirect call, just saying that I that there haven't been many and I've been getting a few in my inbox lately. Uh, this is one of them. And we have here a matchup that is, I think in some ways, very representative of the competitive Dawn of War 1v1 scene. Uh, particularly, not this map, but particularly these heroes. These are Probably two of the, probably just two of the best 1v1 heroes in the game. Uh, the War Boss, as I often say, is an extremely proven 1v1 hero in tournament. I don't know if the Lictor Alpha is, has had quite the tournament success of the War Boss, but definitely a hero who is considered one of, actually, if not the best 1v1 hero in the game. And certainly, I like, I... The game is not perfectly balanced, and I don't know if uh, if you guys are familiar with the concept of tiers. Uh, it's a concept in fighting games where they actually kind of rank characters based on their effectiveness in the game, and it's not. It's usually an acknowledgement that games are not perfectly balanced, and just reflecting which characters are actually better at winning tournaments. And so if we had tiers for this game, I would say uh, both the War Boss and the Lictor Alpha would be high or top tier commanders. And it, like, it certainly raised the question, like, what makes that so? And there, there are a lot of things about these heroes that are very, very good. Um, for the Lictor Alpha, there is the fact that he is one of only two infiltrating heroes in the game. And right away, that means your opponent needs to invest some kind of power to at least be able to detect, not counter, to detect uh, the Lictor Alpha. And I don't consider detecting an infiltrating unit necessarily countering it. You need to invest some kind of power to get a detector unit um, just in order to at least see that Lictor Alpha. And at least the Orcs, they have one of the more convenient detectors in the form of that shoot and knob, since he adds DPS onto a squad that is already very useful, um, not just in Tier 1, but scaling into the later games. But then, even if you even if you can detect that Lictor Alpha, there are a lot of really, really nasty things he does. Uh, for instance, there is the Flesh Hook ability, which is very good as a hero counter, it's very good as a setup team counter, and it actually counters some of its own counters, mainly these detectors in the form of these uh, squad leaders. Since those squad leaders, uh, the detecting squad leaders, they cannot be killed off. Well, what that means is that they kind of share damage with the entire squad, so if they take a lot of damage, the whole squad takes a lot of damage, and that can actually be really, really dangerous for the entire squad. Uh, what's more is the, the Lictor Alpha, even if you detect him, and even if he's not infiltrating, he's still just an extremely powerful fighter. Um, especially if you get an upgraded weapon, and there, there are actually a lot of squads that can't really deal with the Lictor Alpha if he has an upgraded weapon in Tier 1. Especially these feeder tendrils. Ooh, but speaking of upgrades, we now have the upgrade of the spiky armor on the War Boss, and we saw those those Hormogons actually getting hit by that spiky armor right there. The, the spiky armor returns damage to squads that are attacking the war boss in melee. So it is a melee counter, um, mostly effective against the weaker melee squad since every single model will be taking damage and those models can't afford to take too many damage. Too many, too many damage, too much damage. So that was a lot about the Lictor Alpha. On the War Boss side of things, um, the War Boss is a tanky melee hero, full on tanky melee hero. So he is pushing forward. He is drawing the fire and the attention of usually more than one squad, especially ranged squads. And then he's backed up by a very high DPS army, usually the Shooter Boys and the Sluggers. The Shooter Boys actually, only one of them has their big shooters right now, so only this one is really putting out the high DPS. But overall, still a high DPS army, backing up the War Boss, usually killing a lot of models on enemy squads that are not shooting back at Orc squads because they're distracted by the War Boss. 
And this is a little... <laughs> these shooter boys in a lot of trouble. I think they might have wanted to retreat out of there early. I think um, Sir Topi was probably hoping to get the support of his Luda boys. But as it is, he loses the shooter boy squad. So I think he wanted the support of the Ludas to try to keep the shooters out on the field. But I think once he saw that he was starting to take all those model losses, I think he should have just cut his losses and retreat. Um, took a huge loss there, you, losing his fully upgraded shooter boy squad. So now he only keeps the unupgraded one, and now he's putting upgrades on that one. So that's going to be a significant economic um, loss for Sir Topi. Not just in terms of what he invested in that current shooter, in the, the shooter boy squad that he lost, but now that he's investing in his, the one that he hasn't lost to replace um, the functionality of that that lost shooter boy squad. And he hasn't even fully replaced that functionality. He doesn't have aiming. What's that? Um, he got the shooter knob because he pretty much needs it. And we see that Dustafell has also gone for the Barb Strangler. And I think he's 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 probably doing that in part because Shirtopi is regularly using those garrisons. So the gar garrisons are generally a relative weakness of Tyranids in Tier 1. Um, because your choices for garrison counters are pretty much the Barb Strangler Warrior or Spore Mines. And the Barb Strangler Warrior is, is actually really good. Um, it used to just not be a common purchase in the past in retail because it would lock you out of getting adrenal glands for the warriors in tier 2. Um, it has been changed in elite mod. You can get the barb strangler in tier 1 and then change to adrenal glands into tier 2, which is like a major buff because you actually get to use these adrenal, these barb stranglers without too much worry. Um, and it can actually help you out for countering garrisons. Now, I talked a lot about the Lictor Alpha, uh, the War Boss, of course. One of the other big things about the War Boss is, or are, his global buffs. Mainly use your Choppas, and then also secondarily Ard Boys. And those are really, like, engagement winner globals. Um, pretty, generally, if you use that ability, use that global, you will probably win that engagement. Or, you, at the very least, you will force off the one squad that is in melee um, with the squad that has use your Choppas. Here we actually see Ard Boys making them more durable. So that they can... Ooh, but this... We're going to have a dead Lictor Alpha. Yep, very, very smart choice to turn for that Lictor Alpha. Recognizing how little health he had. Luda Boy is just barely getting out of there. Might even get a few models. Ooh, if we also had um, a user Choppas right there, I think that could have been a, a, a wipe on those Warriors. So, no user Choppas. I think a missed opportunity right there. But um, the war boss, those abilities, again, use your choppas and ard boys. They are kind of like, those are tier one globals, in fact. And I think, like, obviously, we love to see Imperial Abysses and other nukes. But I think the more powerful globals in this game are kind of those, those tier one and tier two globals that cost only something like 75 to 150 red, but they win individual engagements. Um, and usually, they're cheap enough that you can use them every engagement, or every other engagement. And that usually results in winning engagements, then pushing forward, gaining map control, and getting generator bashes, which is how you gain the advantage that ultimately wins you the game. Now we have this Death Dread out. Uh, no burners and bits yet, but I'm sure we'll see it eventually. It is pretty much a go-to upgrade. Like, you almost never see people not get the burners and bits, because it gives this Death Dread quite a bit of health. Um, it is... It, even with the Burners and Bits, it's still relatively cheap compared to other walkers. And then, if you actually push forward to a generator farm, you you really capitalize on the advantage of getting a vehicle out early, which is... Like, this, this Death Dread, I'd say it's better than doing that than most other vehicles. Aside from maybe a Razorback that has a flame attack inside of it. But by itself, when you have the Burners and Bits on and you can burn down the generator farm, you're usually... You're taking advantage of the fact that you kind of won the Tier 2... Te the, the Tech Race to Tier 2. And then you can use it so that you can also win the tech race to tier 3. And even lock your opponent out of tier 3. And then you're in a situation where you're producing knobs and your opponent doesn't have any tier 2. And can't even get to tier 3. And is consequently kind of lacking in counters. So... We, but the problem is that there's no burners and bits on this on this death dread. Uh, unfortunately, I think Sir Topi does not have the the resources to get burners and bits. Uh, now he's getting it. Of course, he is he is actually just trying to do the same thing 
um, with the Slugger Boys. He does have to back off, though, because of these Spore Mines. He has to back off with the Slugger Boys. He actually does not have to back off with this Death Dread. He should actually turn and engage with the Death Dread, because there really isn't anything here that can really threaten the Death Dread. Um, I mean, the Lictor Alpha might be able to do some very, very light damage, but that would still be a major win for the Death Dread. So I'm a little disappointed to see this Death Dread just running away when he could turn around and actually beat every single one of these units. He, the Death Dread could win against the the Hormagon, the Lictor Alpha, and as it is, he loses a Shooter Boy squad for not doing that. So again, this Death Dread by itself could actually could have beaten this entire army. So I'm not sure why Sertopi didn't do that. <laughs> But um, we see a war boss now with, he's got Ard Boys on himself. And again, like, might want to see some use your choppers to really even do some more damage to that Tyrant card. Because I think maybe a war boss with Ard Boys and use your choppers would actually counter that Tyrant card. So Tyrant card is sort of the, tyr the Tyranid vehicle in Tier 2. Um, interesting thing I learned about the Tyrant Guard while reading some Lexicanum. The Tyrant Guard has no eyes um, because they don't want it to see. They don't want that to be an unnecessary weak point. So it's because the sole purpose of the Tyrant Guard is actually to protect like a Swarm Lord or, or a Hive Tyrant. And uh, it's supposed to have like no sense of self-preservation. But that Tyrant Guard as a pseudo Tier 2 vehicle for the Tyranids, um, it's interesting because it... It's not a vehicle, really, and I often try to point out that difference, and my my understanding of it is that it's just not as big of a deal to lose a tech race against Tyranids, um, at least from Tier 1 to Tier 2. From Tier 2 to Tier 3, then you might be in trouble. Um, but it's not as big of a deal to lose the tech race and then have to deal with a Tyrant Guard. Um, since the Tyrant Guard is super heavy infantry, so it, the counters that you would really use against the Tyrant Guard are not the same as the counters you would use against an actual vehicle. And we might see these Hormagons go down right here, probably. Yep, the, the counters you would use against the Tyrant Guard are not the same as the one you would use against a vehicle. In fact, they're the most of the vehicle counters would not be quite as effective against the Tyrant Guard as super heavy infantry counters. So you want more things like Plasma, even Power Melee, really. Um, but we can see that War Boss right here. Again, returning damage to all those things that are attacking him in Melee. So, uh, Sertopi has been going for the lighter builds, although, well, maybe not necessarily because of all the squads he's been losing. He actually gets another Slugger Boy squad out, which is very interesting. It's it's interesting to see a late game, um, or even a mid game, second Slugger squad of all things. Um, especially when you could be getting out something like a Weird Boy or even a War Truck just to support that first Slugger Boy squad. Um, what he may be going for is he may want to be going for vehicle plays in Tier 3. Um, and so since he already has one vehicle, he might want to have the second Slugger Boy squad uh, as, a way of, as a way of providing support to uh, another vehicle. And he could, have just, he could, of course, just want it to have as kind of an overwhelming um, way, uh, overwhelming melee counter to the melee units that Destafel has. And two Slugger Boy squads, I mean, that's a, that's actually a massive amount of melee DPS, and it's actually something that would, again, be very, very good against the Tyrant Guard, because the Tyrant Guard, um, the Tyrant Guard does have a resistance against regular melee damage, but it's only a 30% resistance, and just because of how incredibly high the base DPS is of the Slugger Boys, they would actually do a, t a ton of damage to the Tyrant Guard. In fact, I think the Slugger Boys would actually be doing more damage to the Tyrant Guard uh, than the Death Dread and the War Boss. So if he actually puts Use Your Choppas and Ard Boys on the Slugger Boys, uh, they could actually be highly effective against the Tyrant Guard. And now it is time for the Death Dread to get out of there. Yeah, unfortunately, like, he, he really missed an opportunity where he really had the Death Dread relatively uncountered. Um, because these, there was a time when these Adrenal Gland Warriors weren't out, and then even Adrenal Gland Warriors, um, I'm not sure that they necessarily win against a, against a Death Dread as long as it's at full health. Right now with the Death Dread at very little health, I wouldn't keep the Death Dread in there against these Adrenal Gland Warriors. But he had a time when this Death Dread was relatively uncountered, um, 
literally the best things he had for it. I mean, he had, he had the the Barb Strangler Warriors, and he also had the Lictor Alpha, and both of those would definitely get countered um, by the Death Dread. So he's wasn't quite as aggressive with this with this Death Dread as he could have been. It did not really did not get much of a generator bash at all. So the Death Dread. He's been keeping it alive, he's been doing well to keep it alive, and he's still using it in engagements, but he did not use it to its full potential. Um, and right now, Sertopi is actually getting beaten back a little hard. He's the one suffering a generator bash. He, he is already in Tier 3, but, you know, I'd say if there's any race that actually really does suffer from a generator bash in Tier 3, um, or even in the mid to late game, it, it probably is the Orcs, because... They, they rely more on their Tier 3 than their Tier 2. And that might seem, like, obvious, but I would say, like, compared to, say, a race like uh, Chaos, they can't really afford to stay in Tier 2 uh, as well as a race like Chaos could. And they need to go to Tier 3 more than a race like Chaos would. And it also means that we already have this looted tank, so he did go for a double vehicle play with double sluggers to support double vehicles. But he, it's it's going to be, it could potentially be a while before he could put out um, another tier 3 unit, and particularly knobs. As it is, I think we're going to see um, another dead Lictor Alpha, which, yeah, overextended Lictor Alpha. Which I guess is one of the good things about these, uh, about having all these logo squads. The Lictor Alpha is a very tough hero to counter in many ways, but um, having a very, very powerful melee unit is something that can counter him. And I mean, the Slugger Boys um, can probably actually take the Lictor Alpha by himself, just because of how, just because of the ridiculous level of damage that they do. So, we are in the late game, and Destafel has, I think, actually pretty much not suffered a generator bash at all. Um, bashing generators is very, very big in 1v1. Uh, much more so than in team games. It's a huge part of the game in general, and you can really turn a game into a lopsided game by bashing a generator farm, because you'll, that's when you create tech advantages. Um, otherwise, you're just trying to win engagements on even tech, which usually makes for more entertaining games, but if you want to win the game... Um, bashing generators is uh, just a big part of it. So, Destafel is pretty much ridden to tier 3 on a full generator farm. Um, he's, he's finally getting a little bit of a bash, but Destafel is already on his way to either getting out maybe a Swarm Lord or a Carnifex. Either one. Uh, Tyranids are also a race that are very big on their tier 3 and not so much on their tier 2. So that's, that's something I'd say both of these races have a bit in common, uh, although I'd say... Um, Orcs a bit better with their tier 2 with things like the Death Dread and the Weird Boy. And look at the chunks taken out of that Lictor Alpha's health from this war boss. Um, that Power Claw, it does do 95 DPS, but it's also a high burst damage melee weapon. It attacks slowly, but takes out health in huge chunks, much like the... the um, Force Commander's Power Fist. And the, the Death Dread is doing nothing. <laughs> but that was actually an engagement where it maybe... Well... He needs some repairs for that Death Dread. I think he could still afford to be more aggressive with that Death Dread. Uh, while there's still not a Swarm Lord or a Carnifex out on the field, looks like Destafel is actually going for the Swarm Lord. And yes, he is going for the Swarm Lord. So I learned a bit about the Swarm Lord as well from doing some more Lexicanum reading. Apparently the Swarm Lord is uh, a legendary creature, and I think there's like only one of it. And it's practically like immortal because it just gets reincarnated. And I, I think I heard someone once before say that, like, uh, putting the Swarm Lord in the game is kind of almost like putting a Space Marine Primarch in the game, or the Emperor is. Just because it's on that le level of, like, legendary status. Although, the Emperor probably couldn't do much. But, um... The Luda tank has been doing very well, leveled, and it's now at 915 hit points with both the reinforced plating as well as uh, just the level. 
Um, and it's actually taking some very light damage from these Adrenal Gland Warriors because they do, I mean, these Barb Strangler Warriors, they do do some power melee damage, so they can do some very light damage to the looted tank. Um, but he should still kite rather than just taking the damage. And Tyrant Guard is also uh, still alive, so very interesting to see. We both have those Tier 2 walkers from both players still alive. Uh, we might see them go down. Usually Tier 2 walkers are very, very powerful in Tier 2, and then usually difficult to keep alive in Tier 3 uh, against the most of the Tier 3 units. And ooh, we see uh, Sir Topi going for a battle wagon, as well as we see that Swarm Lord already out on the field. And there are some Tyranid players will just go for the Carnifex train. Uh, since you can get more than one Carnifex, and the Carnifexes are a bit cheaper while still being really, really good uh, at what they do. Um, I actually think the Swarm Lord is like, extremely good, and I, I actually think it's better. It's, it's hard for me to say this. I don't regularly play Tyranids. I don't play Tyranids much at all. But I've definitely seen the Swarm Lord just be really, really incredible. Um, and I think one of the big things about the Swarm Lord... I mean, there are a lot of things about it, but I think one of the big things is its speed. Um, the Carnifexes are speed one, are speed 4.5, which is regular walker speed, but that's slow. Um, here you have a Swarm Lord that I believe it goes speed 5.5, and that's actually faster than most infantry. So that's, that's really, really fast. Um, I think we're going to have the Tyrant Guard go down here. It's chasing down the looted tank. And the looted tank should be able to kite it while taking shots. And what's, what Destafel should do is he should try to have... Yeah, he should try to intercept maybe the looted tank uh, with, the, with the Swarm Lord. It looks like the Swarm Lord is going in that direction. So is the Lictor Alpha. And... Uh, oh, he should not have it sit, just sit around. Alright, looks like we're going to have the end of the Tyrant Guard. Yep, the Tyrant Guard goes down. Uh, the Looted Tank also in a little bit of trouble. No, it can't afford to drive into the Swarm Lord because... Oh, and look at how fast this Swarm Lord is, especially with its charge. That just might be the end of the Looted Tank as well. It's still going to be taking some damage, but I think this could be the end of the Looted Tank. Um, even if, like, the Looted Tank gets back to base, um, the Swarm Lord can just walk right into base with really not much to fear. Oh, it, it actually took one hit already. It just needs to take one more. There we go. So this Swarm Lord actually does less damage than a... It does less damage than a Thornback Carnifex. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't have Splash. So it's not quite as powerful as in just in terms of its raw melee damage as a um, Carnifex. But there are a lot of other perks to this Swarm Lord. Again, there's the speed. Um, it does have the Leech Essence ability, which can actually make the Swarm Lord very, very tough to kill. Um... And then, it's... I'm embarrassed to, to be missing a piece of knowledge, but... Um, I believe it does have some kind of synapse. I think it's actually like a speed synapse. And I think you can also reinforce off it as well. So, just a huge amount of perks coming out of the Swarm Lord. I think it's a very powerful unit. And, ironically, for such a powerful unit, I think it's underused. Because a lot of players would just rather go for Carnifexes. But, oh, I didn't even notice. The VPs are almost gone. 32 for Sertopi, and it's a triple cap against him. Uh, he looks like he's going to try to stall out the VPs with... He's got a decap going off on this side, and he's going to try to get this cap up. Lictor Alpha is coming over. I think the Warboss can stomp without, um, without undoing the cap, and as it is, he... Oh, very nice. Disruption. And VPs are almost gone. And we have the one-to-one -to, -one to stall out the VP timer. Destival keeping this Barb Strangler in there, I think just because he wants to win the game. Uh, but he loses the Barb Strangler. And Sertopi desperately trying to get the capture off. I think he should actually maybe... Um, Kill the Lictor Alpha. Yeah, even with the War Boss. He, he does do that. And now he now he's getting captured. But here's the Tyranna Formation. Will this actually kill the War Boss? Yes, it does. It kills the War Boss, so he can't capture the point. And Sir Topi actually has nothing even close that he can use to capture this point. So... Alright, he's sending his Luda Boys back. All right, 
it. I don't know if Sertopi can keep his uh, those Luda boys alive against all of this. All right, he gets the cap off, but he needs to get his Luda boys out of there, and he needs to somehow prevent the rest of these units from capturing. Oh, but now Sir Destafel is going for a back cap. Um, Sir Topi gonna try to force them off with this looted tank, but can they do? Can it do, do it fast enough? He uses the mega boom shot or the boom shot. Does kill them, in fact, kills the entire squad. But he needs to get something back. Here. Oh no, it's a one-to-one -one cap for Destafel. He actually, I mean, he. I guess he just got scared by the swarm lord, but he really should have kept that battle wagon back there to. Uh, to kill off that Hormagant Brood, and as it is, it's actually a win for Destavel. Alright, hope you enjoyed the cast. Have a good night.